Hello, and welcome to the Physical Therapy Owners Club podcast. I'm Nathan Shields, and today my guests are Mark and Wendy Lucas, owners, founders of Virtual Sally, virtual front desk option that they've brought to the market. I'm really excited to talk to them about this because everything seems to be going virtual nowadays, right, guys? That's right. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Nathan. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into it. Tell us a little bit about the virtual capabilities of having that at your front desk and can that truly be as effective as having someone in person covering that it's because it's a super important position in the company and can Absolutely. really drive business in a severely negative direction but also can be hugely positive can does virtual capabilities have the same ability well i guess the first thing we'll say is thank goodness for covid right because uh, <laughs> it definitely changed the dynamics. Um, yeah, this was uh, kind of, a, and I won't go into detail right now, but um, it was, we started this eight years ago, uh, as far as the concept within our own practice. Um, but during COVID, you know, everybody got used to talking in this format. And so um, we had already developed the product and uh, it was something that we were using live streaming video anyways. And so the comfort level was there, um, whereas it hadn't been when we first started the product. Um, but the, the key to what we found is that um, you need that that personal interaction, but that kiosk or whatever the components you're using has to be able to do that, something that every, or excuse me, a live person can do. So in other words, any activity a live person can do in front of the patient, this needs to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what it does. There's one thing about our, my front desk people, especially as we interviewed them, is that we wanted them to be super personable, right. engaging. Hey, how about your kids? Tell me about your weekend, that kind of stuff. I mean, that can go too far sometimes if it's distracting the front desk person from actually making calls and scheduling and collecting copays. But can the virtual can that virtual presence replicate that or uh, still connect with people that way? Absolutely. And we have found that particularly prominent in the, in the practice as we have used it in other customers as well. But we found that people will bring them Christmas presents, even though they're virtual, they'll bring them in uh, this season. We're in summer now in Virginia, where we're located. So it's squash and tomatoes and cucumbers from the garden. So they really do get that personal touch. And the easiest way that I explain that to um, people looking at this product is it's the same as when you call them and talk to them about coming in for their appointment. You're talking mm -hmm. to them, you know, about how great your therapists are and how we're, you know, looking forward to being able to help you with your shoulder pain. Um, so when they come in and they put that face with it, that's exactly what they're doing. They're putting the face with that call. So they're able to say, hi, Nathan, I'm the one that talked to you on the phone. I'm so glad to have you here today and walk them through that process of onboarding with you. So okay, so virtual. yeah, so th someone that is virtual and working remotely will still be taking the phone calls, setting up appointments for, for those people who are calling in, right? And um, uh, handle faxes that might come through the system and that kind of stuff. Yet, exactly. show, tell me what that experience is like then. What's the customer experience when they show up to a virtual, do you call it a kiosk or station? Mm -hmm. Either one you want yeah. to call it. Yeah. We kind mm -hmm. of get away from the kiosk a little bit, even though that's the name of the form. It's kind of like Xerox means copy and kiosk. People tend to think it's like a cold kiosk where you have to initiate something. And that's the beauty of this product. And kind of what you said, we realized early on that it had to not require any action on the part of the patient. So it has mm -hmm. continuous live streaming video. So it's constantly watching that waiting room as if they were sitting right there then, able to see people coming in, going out. Uh, some of our customers, it will see like the traffic going by with cars or people walking by, depending on how their waiting rooms are set up. But they will see a person walk in. If a person walks in and just takes a seat because they're like, I don't know what's going on. There doesn't seem to be anybody here. They will see them and they'll be able to pop right up and greet them mm -hmm. and get and moving with them. So it doesn't require like the kiosk systems that you see out there that they have to actually push a button or ask somebody to come okay. on. It'll pop right up to letting them engage. Does that alert the virtual assistant that someone has come in essentially somehow? Correct. There's both visual and there's an audio cue that the uh, bank of receptionists will get letting them know. And the mm -hmm. beauty of the product is they not only the bank of receptionists uh, are able to see all the offices that they're covering at the same time, but they're also able to see what the other receptionists are doing. So if you mm -hmm. don't have all your receptionists in one place, let's say 
you're like one of our customers in a very expensive labor market, um, you can hire that labor in a less expensive labor market, but they can still see what partners are doing around the country. Um, for mm. instance, one of our customers in New York, he was paying $70,000 for his front desk receptionist, mm. in addition to an outrageous rent payment. Yes, right. so now he has a receptionist in North Carolina at $15 an hour, and he's loving life, and they love her, they love her accent, so it's been a great marriage for them. And actually, he'll tell you, it saved his practice. There was no really? other way to make it. You know, as we all know, reimbursement's not great, but it's really bad in New York. So when you're looking at those costs on, tops of, on top of really declining reimbursement, it's tough to make it work. Well, tell me about their... Um their effectiveness I, I can see that there might be some pros there might the cons are that are obvious to me are okay. simply there's not there might not be as much warmth or engagement if it's the right personality i mean if you got a bad front desk person then you, know, you lost all that anyways but there might not be as much warmth or engagement or as much um uh, of the other conversations like the kids the sicknesses that are going on and the weather and the da, 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 da. so there might not be a little bit of that however i could see some of the pros and so i guess what i'm asking you are some of the pros and cons some of the pros i see are um maybe some of those conversations could be a distraction and mm -hmm. or and like you said maybe this uh, having a virtual person can save in costs um and, and then they also could maybe because of their remoteness are able to focus on some of the other things that they need to do, whether that's, that's right. dealing with insurance companies or, or whatnot. So talk to me, what, what do you believe are some of the pros and cons of a, a virtual remote okay. front desk person? Okay. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it as far as talking with the patients, they can still do a lot of that. And I think one of the nice things that happened, so we started using this in our practice, eight years ago before COVID mm -hmm. was around or any of this stuff. So it was very foreign to people. But right now, people have been doing this for over three years. I mean, they didn't talk to their grandkids or to their loved ones if they didn't do this because COVID made it so they couldn't visit them, they couldn't see them in nursing facilities, mm -hmm. all of those things. So people be have become much more feeling like this is the norm and not as cold as it was before. So in so that sense, COVID did help us. So this is the from the customer experience perspective it is very much like a zoom call like you and i are having on this video call right now absolutely yeah. and it's you know once that call is engaged the whole entire screen so it's a 29 inch video screen on okay. computer screen so it becomes live time so even bigger than what you look at on zoom call so it, it kind of envelops you to come into that person the other thing too i think is we look at society now I don't know about you guys, but when I go to the grocery store, to convenience store, people will, they'll, so, they will stand in line for the, can, can you see this? Oh, it's, like the uh, self checkouts at the, yeah. So this yeah. is Kroger. I was just in here last night. Okay. Yeah. People are standing at the register. The, the guy, the, the girl at the bagging station is checking her phone and yet the line at the checkout kiosk is, is backed up. And so uh, just prefer they're, they're not using the cash registers anymore. No, they're not using it at all. So I had a snap of theirs just last night. Yeah, yeah. So uh it's it's really funny that the people are becoming more comfortable with this type of, of mm -hmm. uh engagement rather than than actual person to person. Right. They're choosing it now versus choosing to have a real person one less person that talks to them. And as you said about the conversations, they certainly can have as long a conversation as they want to. But the nice thing about this, as you noticed, is, you know, your receptionist may be up front and Mr. Jones is going on and on and they need, the line is backing up and he's not realizing that, you know, we're behind versus her having to get her phone underneath and text somebody to come, please come help me, come save me. Mr. Jones yeah. is talking sure. forever. <laughs> you can say, hey, Mr. Jones, I'd love to hear more about your grandkids, but I've got to go catch up with another patient. So I'll talk to you next time. And you can cut that off they don't know that that's what you're doing but you you mm -hmm. work your workflow yeah i got you and people who is it difficult simply not knowing the camera's angle is it difficult to uh catch those people who are might maybe leaving their appointment and you're like hey you gotta schedule for your next appointment or something like that <laughs> We do set that up. We help the practice owner figure out how to set up the stand or kiosk uh, component, how to get the camera to capture that the best they can. But yes, mm -hmm. if you say something, same as if you're sitting there like, hey, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, you need to make your appointment. They can keep walking by, maybe a little harder mm -hmm. when you're sitting there as a person than when you're not. But again, you're going to see that. So that's going to be on your task list that you're going to call Mr. Jones and say, hey, uh, I didn't catch you when you left today. You know, right. we needed to go ahead and get your appointment scheduled. You can also be on the front end of that of like looking 
when they check in, they have no other appointments. So getting those scheduled ahead of time is important. Yeah, yeah. I can see where this might possibly, and tell me if you've noticed this or not, it might force that remote person to be a little bit more structured, knowing they don't have that in-person ability to catch someone that sneaks out, or they got to be a little bit more on top of uh, maybe being proactive. Do you, uh, do you see any of that by chance? Yes. And yeah. we kind of talked about when we started this, we realized that we would be able to cut our costs as far as labor. But some of the things as you're talking about that we found that were hidden savings or things that we accomplished that we didn't think we would is our collection rate went up tremendously for whatever really? reason when you're not sitting right there personally with the person it was much easier for our virtual receptionist to ask for the money and mm. it was a whole lot less excuses from the patient about why they couldn't pay today for those services mm. we also are able to instead of the receptionist having to say oh you have a hundred dollar copay wow how are you gonna how are you going to afford that? It can actually pop right up on the screen. Your copay is displayed. How would you like to take care of that? So it avoids some of those uncomfortable conversations. So oh, cool. it was really nice. Some other things that we found because we take in that data uh, electronically, it's moved immediately into their EMR. So the error rates significantly drop. So oh, as really? Mm -hmm. we went to nice. a first time clean claims at about 98 to 99%. Because nice. we didn't have to have somebody type in that data in. We just moved the image right into the EMR. We oh, also nice. found that because we got that information in there so fast that we were able to bill more regularly. So we started billing twice a day. So again, mm -hmm. yes. cash flow. So it helped. Right. I, if there's more, I want to hear it. Oh, I can talk forever about this. <laughs> Another good pro, though, like things that I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting that, but it was really nice. Our schedule density really picked up because oh. where we, we got rid of a lot of what I call the cabals in the office where, you know, Mr. Smith is going to cancel on Friday, but I really want to leave early. So I'm not going to pull him off the schedule yet. So I'm going to wait till it gets there. And I tell the receptionist, hey, don't pull Mr. Smith off the schedule because I want to leave early. I don't want anybody filling that spot. Mm. But when, when the receptionist is sitting there kind of in your family, in your groove, it's very difficult for them to kind of to cross say, that yeah. line and say, no, no, I need to put it in there because then they're going to create this whole cabal that happens. Mm. Whereas when they're not there physically, it's much easier for them to pull that off and get that schedule filled right away. Well, that, that makes me think of something. And that is, I mean, if you have a great culture then um it, it might not really matter all that much if that front desk person is in person or virtual but when there's a negative culture especially if there's a, a possible a possibly poisonous personality um that can be a negative effect on the front desk and mm -hmm. and limit their capabilities limit their efficiencies they get wrapped up in some of the rumors and some of the drama and having someone virtual just makes them separate from all that and makes it more difficult. And I love what you said. The the physical therapist can't go up and say, hey, here, let's manipulate my schedule this way or exactly. that way. Yeah. Um, you know, putting, uh, uh, although not a physical barrier, but a barrier in place, they have to take some extra steps if they want to talk to the virtual person. Um, right Might make it a little bit different. I, I guess they could just walk up to the camera and say, hey, move my schedule around. Yeah, that you're takes a lot of uh, that takes a lot of gumption. And then right. when they're right there, they can say, "I would love to, but you know, I'm probably going to get in trouble for that." And then yeah. you know, how many times they're going to keep coming up there and saying that. You know, and actually, culture is a good point too, because what we found so the way the system works, it allows them to reduce the number of actual PCCs or receptionists, whatever you call them, uh, that they actually have, because on the back end, uh, what the receptionist sees or the PCC sees is a, a, a number of, of thumbnails, if you want to call them, but they're larger than thumbnail, um, but actual video sessions of each one of the clinics they're looking at. And so oh, they're okay. able to work multiple clinics. And so what happens is like, for instance, we have 10 clinics and we could work that with three and a half PCCs or three and a half reception. Wow. Yeah, so it was a huge cost savings. Um, right. But on top of cultural, we are also able to keep the best of our front desk people. And we paid them a little bit more because we were saving so much money um, by not having as many people. So we could pay them an extra two or $3 an hour. And they were super happy. They were our superstars anyways. And so we retained the best, cut our cost. And so it was win-win. And so imagining if you have multiple clinics, great. I mean, that's amazing, especially because you can use, like you said, fewer people to cover more clinics, right? Mm -hmm. And manage at the front desk effect effectively. If you have one clinic, do you have 
do you have clinics in in your network that are maybe sharing one full-time person? So maybe I don't need someone full-time. Maybe I just need some part-time coverage um, because I don't know, I've got someone on, I've got an in-person uh, front desk person who might be get, might be pregnant, right? And they want to scale back to part-time. Okay. Well, I still need that other, and so maybe they do a hybrid approach where they use a virtual person part-time and my other in-person person part-time. Do you see people doing hybrids or where yes. one person can be the front desk for multiple separate in, uh, separately owned clinics? Correct. Yeah. So we see a lot of those types of things. So sometimes with the single clinics, they may have not have a person at all. And we work with staffing groups that they can then share that equivalent. So they oh, okay. share a FD, a portion of an FTE, and they right. also share it with the team typically. So again, if that person goes on vacation or they're sick, somebody else just pops right up into that position because there's a team of people taking care of them. Mm -hmm. So you really truly never have to worry about the front desk again. You don't have to have the call in the morning that you know you're going to have to figure out what are you going to do today when there's nobody up there and all the problems that come when that occurs somebody not doing the job that they were supposed to do so they're doing this or nobody does it or you try to treat and also collect co-pays and schedule and that just gets everything behind yeah. we do as far as you said the hybrid too we do have um some people that may use the um like during their busy times they may need more than one receptionist so they'll mm. use the virtual sally product then or off hours so they don't can't afford to pay overtime or they don't have someone to come in the early mornings the late evenings so they right. will put the off sides of those to do it so a lot yeah, of different I, ways can be used yeah i hadn't thought about that you know some some people might want to extend their office hours uh, but their front desk person is still going to come in eight to four, eight to five. That's right. And That's right. so how do you get them to come in at 6 a.m.? Or how do you handle the front desk at 6 a.m.? And how do you handle the 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. patients or the Saturday patients? That's right. right. That's right. Um, you don't want to ask them to come in at that time. So I can definitely yeah. see the bed put there. And we have yeah. that outsourced staffing partners that literally they'll cover 30 clinics, but they're all independent practices. And they might have mm -hmm. 10 or 12 or 14 receptionists that they just kind of pop in and out. Um, and sometimes they'll group them by EMRs. So maybe, you know, oh, okay. On EMR A, this group's on EMR B, and this group, and so on. And so they can pop in and out of these practices and uh and you just use virtual side to do that. I gotcha. That that sounds like um, especially when you consider the EMR thing, that that might be difficult to train some of those virtual um, front desk personnel on the different EMRs so that they are, if they're bouncing between clinics, that could be a difficult challenge for them. Right. They tend so, to do pretty well at it because a lot of the billing services that are out there work in a number of EMRs. So most of the time, those staffing agencies are just having those types of people that are now moving into this type of technology for them. Yeah. So they're very comfortable in a number of EMRs so they get to very good at, at learning that they also do a really good job of onboarding the clinics for their culture like how do right. they want you know that first conversation to go what do they want to be said how do they want their schedule to run are they running on the hours on the 30s on the 40s or a mixture of those so they set all of those things up front so that they know how their templates are running yeah i what the um you know, it, it's interesting that you guys are bringing this virtual component to the to the PT realm, and I'm sure you, you're doing outside of PT as well. But um, we're not. I, oh, you're not going. You're not. You haven't extended outside of PT. No, we've been asked. We've been requested. But this this is what we know. Okay, so, I got gotcha. you. And and it, it, I I might have been skeptical, but I remember from a, a two or three years ago, I did a podcast with Tom Delonzo Baker, and he had a front desk person that was full time, and she was amazing, rock star, did great, and she said. I want to work from home. And he's like, I don't know how you can do that. <laughs> and this was a number of years ago, probably about the same time that you guys started looking into this as well. And she said, if I can do it from home and keep my same KPIs at the level that they currently are, will you let me do it? And he said, yes, great. Let's try it. So he set her up from home. And some of the stuff she was able to accomplish from home was setting up, establishing a full schedule of PT visits prior to the patient even showing up for the initial evaluation, yeah. collecting co-pays before the patient even showed up at the door, right? So if I hadn't heard that story, I'd be a little bit more skeptical. It just takes, it takes a little bit more thought, structure, expectation, and you still hold them accountable, of course, but you guys have had enough experience in this where you have the systems and protocols in place to make sure that things don't slip, I'm assuming. And, and that's, coming, that's welcoming from a PT owner's point of view, I'm assuming. 
Absolutely. Right. And a neat thing about ours, when you finish the interaction, it comes up same thing that we have um, for a rating system for our therapist. How much did you like this experience with your therapist? It's the same thing with the receptionist. The smiley face grading scale comes up mm -hmm. and that's attached to the receptionist. So you can pull that up on the admin panel and see Nathan's doing great. Mark's not doing so well. So we either need to do some training with Mark or we need to say this is maybe not the right thing for you. But you can definitely follow all that stuff and see what your patients are saying about their experience with it. We've had really good yeah, uh, okay. feedback on it. Tell me a little bit about the station and what it looks like, because we've talked about the, the interaction with the front desk person, but how do copays get collected in a virtual situation? Are there receipts printed out or is a, can the schedule be printed? How does that work? What does the station look like? Yeah, um, it's a it's a slick look station. So it's an all in one computer. It's about 27 inch um, uh, screen. Monitor. It's touch it's touch uh, touch sensitive, has an integrated speaker, microphone, processors integrated into the back. So it's very sleek looking. Um, there is a credit card terminal. So you can take credit card payments, debit card payments right there on site. And there's a multi uh, functional uh, machine scanner and printer that's on site. So receipts, for instance, they can be printed on demand. So if somebody wants to receipt for their credit card transaction, it'd be printed right on the printer there, um, even though the reception is remote. Um, they can print other things like um, the work work notes, notes, yeah, notes. Um, anything. Mm -hmm. And they can also scan documents and multi documents if they have a, some practices like to have documents filled out on paper. And so they can do that right there. They can print the documents on demand as well, or sometimes people store, uh, store them up behind the, the machine, uh, but they can go to their seat, fill out their documents, come back up, scan them all in, even if it's up to 30 pages. And, uh, and it goes directly into their EMR. So it's uh, it's pretty slick. Yeah, ID think, cards or insurance yeah. cards. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they Absolute can either be lights. scanned in or they can be picture captured um, from that. Oh, okay. and like, just like I have the phone up, yeah. And again, like prescriptions when they come in, if you know if you're using just a kiosk type of thing, if you can't scan that, then you've got to get that prescription in order to get that claim out the door. So you can get that, they can scan that in, that can go directly into the EMR, their MRI results, x-ray results, if they have that report, um, you can scan all of that in, drop it in. So when the therapist is, sees the patient, all that's able to be pulled up for them. There's one thing that doesn't do, which is really important, is it does not display PHI on the screen. There's some other systems that they'll have them fill out their information on the screen. Oh. And that's just a HIPAA problem. Uh, Cause somebody okay. can be sitting behind them or cross away. Yeah. So we don't do we don't display anything like that on the screen so they if they have paper if the new patient paperwork is paper format it can be scanned in otherwise for those people who have ehrs that uh, allow you to um send it to their phones or send it via email prior to the visit that kind of stuff it can still also get taken care of right. obviously. exactly so, okay yeah yeah understood well, tell us a little bit about you guys. You said you started eight years ago, and so this has been a wild ride. And uh, it sounds like the pandemic might have helped you more than hurt you. Considering, let's take another one if you want to send another one down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about where you came from to get to this point. Well, yeah, yeah. So about eight years ago, yeah. um, in our practice, we had seven offices. So you can imagine the amount of call-ins or the amount of time that you'd have people quit. And so um, Mark uh, had had a, a big background in technology. So we'd done several other technology um, adventures and stuff. So one day I just had it with the front desk and I called our practice manager up and I said, we're going to go virtual with the front desk. And she said, what? I said, we're going to do virtual front desk. And this again was before it was very popular and she's like i've never seen you not do anything you said you were going to do so i guess we're on <laughs> so i came home and mark and i started talking about it he used his technology background and we kind of put a few things together you know piecemealed it here and it was there. very kludgy at first like yeah. skype sessions and taped together with nuts and bolts and string oh and really yeah. <laughs> so, yeah but it worked but patients hated it at first uh, our really? staff hated it at first. Everybody hated it, but it was it was cutting cost and it was working not very well. But we kept refining it over the years, and so I guess about three years ago, I guess it got to the point where so many people were coming through, particularly doctors and other people in the in the profession, were saying, "This is really neat. You should do something with this." And mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we hired out the development, we built it out, and and um, like when he said, we've we've done this before, and so um, so yeah, it's. Yeah. Done. Yeah launched it at PPS about two years ago. So been building. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So it's been fun and we continue to refine it and add 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 features to it. Customers mm -hmm. tell us things that they want. We'll put those in there as we can and things that we think, oh, well, this would be great if we can do that. So the future uh -huh. is yet to be. 
Well, where do you see, do you see this evolving even more? Oh, yeah. do you, oh, yes. what do you, where do you see, where do you see this going? AI. Um, AI yeah, tell gonna, me about that. Yeah. So, um, you know, 70% of patients that come in, um, it's a return visit, right? So they have one right. initial value. Have right. term so, so there's a lot you can do with that automating that process so everything from facial recognition to just ai as far as um uh, selecting the patient from a group of from a uh, scheduling list so that they literally have to do nothing with this check, -check and they just don't have to talk to anybody they can just walk by monitor they're in um things like that um there's um oh gosh there's a whole host of things that mobile for instance you could you know check in yeah. here and not even worry about coming to a kiosk at all um, so yeah, it's it's uh, the nice thing about a product too is it's, it's on a licensing agreement structure, and so as long as you're paying the monthly licensing fee, you, you get all the upgrades. So it'll never oh, okay. date. So it'll always always be the most latest up to date uh, uh, feature. And I think you're talking about some of the electronic uh, opportunities there with AI and facial recognition and and mobile. I think people are going to start expecting that. Correct. Right when they walk in, like. To say, and more, I think we're just kind of getting a little bit more detached as a culture from Absolutely. social interaction. Absolutely. And to be able to walk into an office and say, I'm here, and my phone says, How do you want to pay your copay? Do you want to pay this with Apple Pay or another card? <laughs> and then exactly. just push the other button. And That's then right. it alerts everybody that I'm here. And, and if there are any notifications, it gets pushed to my phone. Um, I can see that being, I can definitely see that being a way of the future. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think the thing is, is that we still need some way to be able to interact if things don't come off exactly like you want them right. to. Right. We've used some of those products and the problem is, it's just like at the grocery store, when it doesn't work, you've got to have somebody standing there to come over yeah. and say, oh yeah, there's, it, it's in the bag or it's not in the bag or here's your ID or those types of things. A lot of things will get automated. But again, instead of having to have somebody standing there to what I call babysit the kiosk, you can have that done virtually. So again, you'll be mm -hmm. able to cover more and more offices with less people, the more things that are automated with that. But you mm -hmm. still need that person to be able to, okay, you know, it doesn't see appointment for you at all today because you were supposed to be at the clinic across the street instead of here. And mm -hmm. but we'd like to keep you here. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and bounce in there and say, glad, glad to see. You. I'm sorry, we don't see appointment for you, but let's see if we can get you worked in today or yeah. any of that's just one example of the things that can happen. And AI could even be incorporated in some of the questions that are asked, because even like an initial eval, there are a lot of questions that patients ask that are very standard questions. You know, they mm -hmm. probably 89% of the questions that are asked by a receptionist are questions they ask everybody. And mm -hmm. so the, a lot of times the answers are pretty similar too. And so right. through AI, you could start to really do some of that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. I see it. I guess your biggest concern, worst case scenario, is there's a power outage. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? <laughs> Well, yeah, there's backups, right? Yeah, yeah, we do a couple of things. So um, again, if it if you if your um, Wi-Fi goes down, your internet goes down, excuse me, then if your EMR is not going to work either. Um, but we do encourage people to do a cellular backup. That's an easy way to get that right back up. Um, you know, if the power's out, the power's out. Um, so you're going to be in a whole different um, module unless you're able. You might to not be. You not might not be treating all together. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it exactly. changes a lot of things. Yeah, it changes a lot of things because you know your credit cards wouldn't process if she, if the reception was sitting there. Your credit cards wouldn't process. They wouldn't right. be able to send you in the EMR if they couldn't do that either. So you're going to go right. back. To, but I always tell people the number of times that happens versus the number of times that your front desk person doesn't come to work. Yeah way different <laughs> i'll take that that's in the power <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all day long <laughs> yeah right oh exactly yeah well, what, always, what, go ahead i say i always tell the joke uh, it's not a joke it's the truth whenever the phone would ring before six o'clock in the morning before we had this the worst words in the world would come out of my mouth because i knew what was going to happen that day and now happening. all we say is okay we're going to pick up you know an additional office today um everyone's uh -huh. picking up you know, whatever their primary or secondary offices were got it so tell me a little bit about the virtual assistants. Are these people expected to be trained by the the owners, the front desk people in that clinic, or do you does your company provide some of that training for the virtual assistants? How does that work? Yeah, so we we provide the training uh, for them, and we also provide some best practices because it's a little okay. different, right? In this kind right. of media, lists of best practices that we provide, uh, and even part of the training is is part of that as well. But also, if we're using one of the outside staffing companies. Then it's a trained trainer, so we train them on how to train, and then they they will in turn provide those services. 
uh, for the yeah. Customer. So if there's a remote office of two to three, say there's two to three people managing, I guess they don't even have to be in the same office. There's two to three ma people managing five to six clinics, mm -hmm. then you can rest assured that all three of those people have the same training on your clinic specifically so that they can exactly. help and support when, if someone needs to go on vacation or get sick, That's right. right? That's right. right. Yeah. You also gain the fact that they are teaching them the best practices for a front desk person, how to have those difficult conversations about money if they need to, or how to engage the customer. So they get all that background training that you don't have to pay for. That mm -hmm. it comes the company itself. Yes. Oh, that's cool. I would imagine there's a benefit then to you mentioned earlier about if you have this A player and they I don't know, want to move, want to uh, work, start working from home. Maybe they're maybe they are pregnant and they have a child, but mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. would still like to work from home. This provides that capability, I'd assume. That's Absolutely. Right. Like right. if they get transferred because of a partner or spouse that they have to go somewhere else, then you don't have to lose them. If they like their job, you like them, let them take the take it on the road with them. So basically they can use this product and do it at any time. We we found that to be a big thing during COVID because we had, you know, some staff that turned up COVID positive, but they were asymptomatic. And so, but okay. they didn't want to borrow a PTO. So they just, they just went home and just logged in from mm -hmm. home. They, they could still work, even though they had COVID, it felt fine. So uh so they didn't have to burn their PTO, so they were happy. Great. That's super cool. And such a benefit to those people, especially I can imagine a front desk person, if they really love their job and there are those PCCs that really love the culture, love the family, Absolutely. love the, the service that we're providing. And then, um, they move, it can be just so anxious and tear jerking that they have to leave, but this still provides them that opportunity if they really love it. Right. That's right. right. Exactly. Anxious for both parties because the practice owners oh, also yeah. Like, oh my God, yeah, what I'm going to do. All over again. Yeah. Sorry, it, really, yeah, it is really nice. And actually, it was kind of funny. Uh, before we went to market, I was kind of like, you know, as Mark said, initially we were like, this is where we're going because we, I mean, you could see the future. You knew the mm -hmm. reimbursement was going down and costs were going up. And that's just escalated lately with the Medicare cuts that we got this, this year. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the cost of labor and inflation and everything going up. Um, but as we went forward, as he told you, they like it better. Um, but before we went to market, I was kind of like, okay, we need to just really see if this is what people say that they really want, or are they just saying that because they want, that's what we want to hear. So I took our group and I said, you know, guys, we've been thinking, and we've decided that we're going back into clinic. We're going to, we're going to table this. We're going back to the old method. Everybody's going to go back to clinics. And they all just looked at me they didn't really say anything. I was like, are there any questions? They still sat there and looked at me and didn't say anything. Said, okay. So I walked out and went to my office and not more than maybe a minute later, the, their manager came around the corner and she goes, we need to talk to you. I was like, okay. She goes, we don't want to go back to the offices. We quit. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, so like no. if you put us back in the office, we quit. I was like, are you kidding me? And they were like, she was serious because she thought I was serious. I was like, I was just kidding. I wanted to see if you guys really did like this method. Oh, wow. I mean, they do. Yeah. They they yeah. like that. I think sometimes we forget that they can at times get pretty beat up up front too. Yeah. You know, sometimes, yeah. you know, they'll say, oh, Mrs. So-and-so is such a witch. I can't believe how mean she was. And they're great to us, but they've been really like hitting on them hard. And this really does give them a little bit of protection from that. They could say, oh, Ms. Stearns, I can see you're really upset. Why don't I give you a minute and I'll touch base with you in a little bit. And so you can kind of diffuse that situation. They have a lot more control when they don't have to sit there and get beat up. Yeah, I can definitely see that. It was, it was such really a benefit. Good. I forgot to mention it. So, um, so we had a situation where um, somebody walked into one of our clinics, was kind of an unsavory character, if you will. And uh, But since the live streaming video is always watching these um, waiting rooms, the person walked through, they recognized it wasn't a patient, that somebody shouldn't be here. They called 911, they were there in two minutes. And so it's, it's not a security system, but the fact that it has that live streaming video at all times looking, then it's just another little safety net. Well, you almost prefer that they were virtual in that situation and weren't there in person. Absolutely. That's Correct. exactly right. That's yeah, right. our clinicians were all protected behind their locked door from the waiting room to that. And then there was no one else but that person there. So is that something in this situation particular to your system that you'd prefer you'd recommend that there is a locked door uh, from the waiting room to the treatment? Does that matter? Because I, I don't think I, had, I don't think I had any of my clinics that had a locked door. This is a this is a purely work comp clinic, um, okay. and, a, oh, and not okay. the greatest nation in town. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> it was a necessity. We had a lot. We had a person there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I understood. Gotcha. <laughs> what didn't we cover in terms of 
a virtual front desk, remote front desk person in place uh, that we haven't covered so far? What have we not covered? Well, there's two other things that are pretty significant. Um, if you're looking to grow your practice, you want to add another office. Um, one of the biggest headaches is hiring a front desk person and training them because the first yeah. two or three months are going to make a lot of errors. So with this, what we found is we just didn't hire anybody. They just, just the pool of receptions just absorbed that extra office. Mm -hmm. And so there was no training and there was no hiring another person. So that was great. Right. Um, the second thing we did was we eliminated the, the office, the front office period. So in any of our clinics, as we were implementing this, we just removed that front office space and made it more treatable therapy space. And so now when we open new offices, we can even open them with smaller footprints because we don't need that reception area. Um, and so it's all treating space with the exception of the virtual salad kiosk. So those are two big benefits that we found um, mm -hmm. that we weren't yeah. expecting. That's yeah. pretty amazing. I, I never considered, I, I guess I did think about that in one of my clinics. What would I do with the front desk now? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, it's kind of awkward to have this station off to the side or in front or something like that. But there's this unused square footage in my That's office right. now and so mm -hmm. how could that be leveraged to, to uh maybe to in, increase the size of my clinic yeah or, and we've seen know. some clinics that the the front office is a third to a half the size of the square footage it's a lot of space yeah you know so it's reclaim it make a therapy space yeah if you can add one or two more tables yeah there you go it makes up for it right absolutely <laughs> another soft saving another benefit. benefit yes exactly yeah exactly well, tell me a little bit, um, if people wanted to get in touch with you guys, how would they do that? Where are you guys hanging out? Yeah, we're, we're located in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, but, you know, virtualsally.com is the easiest way to get it holds, I guess. Um, okay. Pretty much it, everything's there. You can even schedule a demo from the website if you want to see it. Um, we do lots and lots of demos. And um, people get it really quickly. We, we're not usually more than five minutes into the demo. And they go, oh, I get it. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's okay. just, it's a as you well know it's it's a big problem today for everybody so right well the cost of the front desk person always it's always been an issue but finding a good front desk absolutely. person can be difficult all uh, right absolutely and i love what you talked about how this can um support you in your expansion because that second clinic might not be completely full to begin with and so exactly. uh, the success of it that might depend on the success of your front desk person that's right. Performing well, right. Mm -hmm. Are you on any other social media outlets? Yes. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, cool. Instagram. Uh, okay. We have two videos out there too. So. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I'd recommend people look into that. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time with me today, Mark, Wendy. It's great you, having man. you on. Uh, it's, it's really interesting and amazing to see what the capabilities are out there nowadays. And so I love having this platform to uh, show PT owners what's out there. So Absolutely. thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. You. We love really, getting really new PTs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And OTs. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Take care.